consecration or pran pratishtha is a ceremony in which you establish the energy the unseen energy of the consciousness into uh, the gross material it's bringing the subtle into the gross so that people who have no deeper experience of the subtle can have it through the gross see idol worship is not worshiping the idol it is worshiping the consciousness or the energy which is being infused in the idol and the process is how the creation has happened you see you need a form to relate to right you can't relate to a space the space also has energy but if it is the space or the consciousness expressed through the body can be related so it's to establish that relation the connection with the divinity the idol is made as a madhyam medium how do they do now there is a whole process first the shilpi or the sculptor selects the stone for it not any stone is put in the sanctum sanctorum there is a whole procedure how you can select the stone now sri ram's idol to carve the idol they had to select the stone and the stone was available only here in karnataka so they see many signs for the stone even in the stone there is a male stone and female stone male idol has to be done by male stone only if it's a female idol they will look for that particular stone and then there is again another ritual right time they will find the right mohurt or auspicious time to start etching that stone and then once that is completed they will take that idol to place of consecration and they will put it in water see the source of life is in water right water is the source of life so that idol is immersed in water for several days sometimes 3 months sometimes you know 3 weeks like that and then they do dhanya divas then take that idol and immerse it in grains this is dhanya the second source of life is in the grains the seeds will sprout and become flower that that shows the sign of life isn't it so the grains whole grains which sprouts around the idol so that the idol absorbs those vibes life forces from the seeds ankur arpan this is called then there is herbs they put all the herbs on top herbal garden actually all the herbs are grown on the idol they put the seeds are put they are put so that the roots of the herbs touches the idol and after that they take the idol in the city in the village so that everybody looks at the idol and they everyone touches the idol and feel a sort of connection to it people's attention attention also brings life and then the officiator of this process is called yajaman he is given ablutions he has to follow certain rules for 10 11 days he has to keep his mind pure his intellect free from any prejudice he has to practice purity in the mind and heart he is not supposed to get angry and get mad at anybody in those days he has to keep his mind in uh, his spirit highly elevated he is not allowed to do uh, any discrimination about, with anybody so those few days he has to follow all those rules have food one time or have just fruits and you know all the cleansing process chitta shuddhi is called purity of mind and then he brings the idol and puts it on the pedestal under the pedestal there is a yantra kept yantra is most important idol is very secondary is nothing below the idol there is a diagram the yantra mantras will be written etched and then nine gems are put there gold silver all the diamond all the jewels little little small pieces of all nine jewels nine gems are placed in it and then the yantra is placed that's why yantra is more important in any pran pratishtha and the yantra they do pu- first they do puja for 45 days and then the yantra is brought and placed 
in the right time on top of it the idol is and, and all the gems are put and then the idol is placed and havans are done before that all the different energies all different gods and goddesses mantras are chanted and then the fire ceremony is done with so many different type of herbs and then that havan uh, or the yagya energy of the fire energy is connected to a pot of water kalash this water is gathered from uh, sacred rivers and it's brought into the kalash if you see in any yagya there will be a kalash and there will be fire ceremony happening sometimes they connect the kalash to the ceremony with a thread so from the fire it moves to the water element in the pot then this water which is collected after all the yagya purnauti has been performed and once purnauti is done then the kalash is taken around the temple and then finally the water of the kalash is put on the idol and a ray of sun is also brought to made to fall on the idol that is very important the sun is the another source of light so from wherever you see life that is reflected or that is invoked into the idol now the idol is not just another stone another statue the statue now is a living idol is considered a living idol because there is prana there is energy in it anyone who comes there sits and they, they can feel the energy they, they will have to see it in the same sense you can't see it as another stone but you have to see it as a living deity from that day onwards is and a name is also given at that time the yajmana says a part of his prana his that prana shakti through pranayam he will do the pura kumbhak and then he establishes that prana shakti into the idol and this has been done by rishis and mahatmas from ages sadhu sans um, they they infuse the energy into the idols and people come and they, they pray and offer and go this has been the practice and the consecration ceremony is important and it it you have to follow all these um, procedure